Jeremy for us, that's okay. Tony. How are you? How are you, Tony? Um, just go back to the Portugal game, first of all, and how big a deal was that for you? How much did you enjoy it? Yeah, it was definitely the highlight of my career so far. Um, I probably didn't have, kind of had a bit of an idea, but yeah, I probably got confirmation um, probably about an hour or two before kickoff that I was in. So um, yeah, to this day, it's probably going to live long in the memory and one I'm never going to forget. Um, obviously, the result up until 90 minute would be one of the best uh, in history if we if, if, if we held on to that one little win. But um, no, it's going to be probably the best like my career, probably until I retire. You know Stephen Kenny well, of course, from him being your manager. Were you, were you surprised, though, or were you expecting the call? Because um, he sometimes does throw a curveball in or two. Yeah, like I've been used to his, the way he picked his team at the knock and stuff, but um, yeah, he kind of rang me to about a week before the camp started saying, I'm bringing you into play and um, you're not just coming to make up the numbers or whatever. So I didn't really know how, which way to take that. And then, yeah, obviously to get told an hour before kickoff, it was just a, such an adrenaline buzz, it was just unbelievable, just had to process it and get my touch right in the warm up and then just go from there, so um, yeah, I was happy with how we done overall, but um, yeah, the main thing was we didn't get the points on the board though, but yeah, it's definitely going to be a night that I'll never forget. And then the, the game against Azerbaijan after that, I mean, were you disappointed then not to, to start again, because I mean, you did very well and did you feel there was a momentum? Uh, I think the gaff had to freshen things up. Like we put a lot into that game, and um, yeah, we needed some fresh legs going out there. And um, he, he told me it wasn't performance related. So, um, uh, so yeah, I think it was just a case of freshening things up because a lot of the boys put so much effort into that. And um, yeah, like I said, not to get the result was devastating. But um, yeah, we put a lot in that night. So. And how important is the win against them now for yourselves, for belief, and, and for Stephen? Yeah, that's what our aim is this week now. We have a full week um, training, um, which is kind of unusual. Last camp we had three games in quick succession, so we have a full week to work on things, and um, obviously we're going out there to try and win, and um, hopefully we can do that. Thank you. Do I have that? Uh, you know, yeah. Just speak about the, the summer when you um, won your first camp and you became the first African ball player to, to represent Ireland. Did that mean a lot to you, that, that fact? It was a special moment for, for myself and my family. Um, we obviously had a different journey, you know, getting where I was. Um, my father came here, he got a job opportunity in 2005 to bring his family across. And uh, I grew up in Ireland in County Cork and I learned the culture, um, you know, um, integrated with the system. So um, um, Stephen actually wanted me to, you know, to declare for Ireland. I, I showed interest and there was a lot of complications because, you know, with the, with the registration and how I came into the country. But, you know, to carry that burden of being the first uh, African, African-born player is, um, is very special. And I can see, you know, the, how proud I made my family. Obviously, the people of Cork, those I work with, is priceless. You're from Nigeria. And there's quite a few uh, guys in the squad at the moment with Nigerian background, not just the, the first team squad, but down through the ages as well. Why is that, do you think? I'm, I'm guessing Ireland is a beautiful country. <laughs> um, I, I don't know. Um, I'm guessing you know the opportunities here is uh, you know more in abundance than it would be you know back in Nigeria. Um, and I say you know I really enjoy the culture. I'm sure that w that's one of the reasons why my 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 father you know chose Ireland over Florida, which was the other option that he had. Um, you know, he knew the pe you know the kind of people he's worked with Irish people, and he you know really enjoyed it, and he chose to be here. I don't know exactly why it would be, but obviously you know it's a country that gives you know foreigners a, a lot of opportunities, and obviously I'm one of them. So just that's really what I would think what may be the reason. Thank you. Very much. Thank you. Paul, just a quick one for both of you guys. Where do you see yourselves in the pecking order in terms of starting place three, junior three? Um, no, like I said, we have a full week now and it's, it's going to be a clean slate for everyone, I think, to try and impress the gaffer this week and um, I think that's going to be everyone's goal this week is to train well and see where that takes you. So, um, if you're not training well, you, you don't give yourself the best chance, so you have to give yourself the best chance. You must be confident though after you're showing this Portugal. <laughs> yeah, but uh, you can't really take that for granted. It, ever, like I said, it's a clean slate. Um, if you don't train well, you won't be near the pitch, so um, that's all I'm focused on is training well and trying to put my best foot forward. Or yourself, just you're obviously unlucky you missed the last camp through injury. 
Yeah, I picked up a, a hamstring strain just before you know I was able to to, to travel. Um, as Jamie said, you know you have to put the effort in. Um, I think it's a it's a group effort. And you can see everyone's buying into the system. Um, we we kind of trying to set up a different way, trying to trying to get the three points, which is the main thing uh, on Saturday. Um, obviously, I would like to play, but I'll make the I'll make um try to make the the gaffer's um, decision as difficult as I can by training well all week. But if not, I will be ready, and whoever starts, um, I'm sure they're going to be determined to try to win for the nation. Thank you. Thank you. Robin? Yeah, Jamie, do you remember what you had last time you were in that game? Nearly got arrested. <laughs> 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 Hopefully it's not like that the next day. You're going to have to explain that, Jamie. You know? <laughs> 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 can't have that as a headline. <laughs> uh, so, um, yeah, I think it was me and Sean Gannon at the time. We were out there for Dundalk. We were playing in Carabag and... Uh, we are actually in media for RTE and um, we were at like this, um, just like beside the sea on this like sea walk and um, we were doing like camera interview and stuff and out of nowhere about five policemen come up in this little cart and we were like, this is a bit strange, we were kind of looking around us or whatever. Turns out that we were the culprits, we didn't realise we were doing anything wrong and they started speaking. Um, we couldn't understand the word they were saying and they were kind of getting a bit aggressive and we were kind of like looking around us. We didn't really know what we, we'd done wrong or whatever. And um, yeah, it turns out it was um, private property that we were doing an interview on. And um, yeah, so we didn't nearly get arrested, but <laughs> it was a good story to have. Huh? How did you get away? Oh, we had to run. <laughs> <laughs> no, we just cleared it up with, there was some uh, English speaking uh, policeman came down and um, yeah, we were just told to move on to a different plot of land to do the interview, so uh, we got away. Edge? Jim, just with you and talking. Um, you said there you only found out an hour before kickoff for the Portugal game that you were actually starting. Is that, is that the, the way the manager um, announces his team for every, every game? Is it, is it really that, that late in the day, to, especially for someone like you, it's a place for the big game? Um, at Dundalk, it was different. Um, you could kind of tell um, on a Friday or on a Thursday or that. Um, and yeah, I think I don't know if it was just for my sake, keeping my nerves away or overnight or something. Maybe you done it, and uh, maybe that was the reason why. So um, yeah, that was I don't know, probably done me a favour. <laughs> John, John, yeah, I suppose you made such an impact when you came on in the game, um, and then to go and watch the last window from the other sidelines and to see the team perform so well and do so well. Was it a relief in the sense that you, you still got the, the call for this this uh, this squad and it shows that the manager has, has belief in what you can bring to the squad? Yeah, I, I guess he you know he sees something special in me. I always said that um, the competition and uh, you know the players you can choose from is uh, you know top class players and to select me and leave people out, um, you know something I take pride in enjoying and I just hope I can you know repay that with my display. Um, just, I'm just here trying to do, you know, do the best for, you know, for for the nation. Trying to help the team win points and, you know, have a good camp. Um, we all have one goal, you know, trying to, you know, win as much games as possible. Have a winning mentality and create a culture of winning, in, you know, in in this nation. And um, that's what you know we all buy into, and I, I look forward to that. And just to follow up on that in terms of the team have been struggling for goals, so, but you showed in your approach that that's sort of direct, real, you know, direct play and just that. Confidence to go and go after goals. Is that something that the team can really benefit with? Yeah, God has, God has blessed me with some pace, and you know, with pace and power, it does put trouble uh, on the defensive side. And so, if I can just you know take pressure off um, off my teammates, as, as I said, uh, attack is the best form of defense. You know, the more you can attack and supply for the strikers, you know, it takes pressure off, pressure off the defense. And that's what I'm trying to do: just create create problems that are high up in the pitch, and hopefully um, get a goal for myself or set up a goal and. I feel like that kind of way, if we, you know, we hire and raise our intensity, we will cause a lot of trouble. Dan? Jamie, just to go back to 2019, away from the uh, discussion to the rest of all that stuff, but um, can you remember much about that game? And how do you sort of evolve, how do you feel you've evolved as a player since then? Because I remember at the time, there was a sense, Carabag were on another level. But did those games give you an idea of the, the level you needed to get to for that? Yeah, that was probably my first kind of campaign I've started in Europe. Um, probably 2018 I started the group or the, the games then as well but 2019 is coming a bit mature and um, yeah I think I think at home against Carabag I think we probably should have bet them um, at least 
two goals. I think I had a few sitters as well. So, um, but yeah, going out there, we got off to a slugger start and we got punished at that level. So, um, yeah, it probably does open your eyes when you play them big European games that if you're not on it or uh, you give teams half an opening, they'll take it. So, um, yeah, it's probably was me first kind of experience of teams punishing you for mistakes. Do you know, can I just ask, um, you spoke after the game in, in Hungary about uh, the team taking the lead before the game, the response, and there was quite a reaction afterwards to your comments. Were you really struck by that, the, almost the support and sort of love you almost you received from, from Irish fans in the aftermath? Yeah, was, maybe that is why my, my parents did choose to come here. Um, the support here is amazing. Um, I, I did mention to you know um, Seamus Coleman, he was as, as the captain of the team and him pushing for us to take the knee because I know how difficult it can be for people of different backgrounds and different ways to speak out. So you know he made it easier for us um, you know by speaking out for us and I know how hard it is for you know those younger players that might it might affect. So you know that's that's what we have here. That's the culture togetherness uh, that we have uh, in this nation and uh, that's why I'm so proud to be here. Kevin Keeney, we've got a few people who want to ask questions, so this is restricted to two each, if possible, Barry. Hey, who's the first person you rang after you made your Ireland debut in Hungary? After I made my Ireland debut, um, my family, my mom, my mom rings me every game, every every game I play, she always rings me, and the first thing she says is, "How are you feeling? I hope you're, you know, you're healthy," and that's what she worries about, um, just coming out healthy. So my mom rang me, and then I rang my my brothers. I have two brothers and two sisters. So we all done like a, a Zoom call, Facebook call, and obviously my my dad. I rang my dad last because obviously he's the <laughs> he's um he's the you know he's a father figure. He's always happy to to be last. So um, I have great support from my family and uh, a lot of my friends. You know from Cork, my phone was just going off, but um, my mom was the the first person I contacted. Yeah, if you don't mind me asking, how did that conversation go? Like, okay. uh, she was very teary. I can tell the emotion in her voice and. Uh, you know, my you know my parents take pride when you know when their kids do well. And um, where we come from in Cork, a lot of people notice my mom and they ask about her. So she feels famous, and you know it's uh, it's a uh, I can see <laughs> I can see how um, how happy it makes her, and she you knows trying to answer questions. And all. So she feels very important, and she's um, she's always said that you know she dreamed of you know me helping her, you know being recognized. So I'm hoping I'm doing the best. Gavin, uh, you mentioned. Florida was the other option uh, before you came yeah. to Was there ever like a dark, wet night trying to Nemo Ray? <laughs> 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 you went, God, it would be sweet just be living on the East Coast of America. Oh, wow. I've, I actually never thought of it like that. But when you get older and you, you go through winter days and you're thinking, Dad, what, what, what made you come here? But uh, I guess it's, uh, it's the best decision that he's there, obviously, for his family. And I'm reaping the rewards in being here. Um, you know, I've, I've, ever since I've been in Ireland, I've really enjoyed it. Um, I can see maybe you can hear my caucus and it come and goes, um, but um, the people around and people I've grew up with, you know, very supportive. My school keeps contacting me and you know how proud I make them. I love the kids and you know how you know how I've inspired them and you know just to you know to follow their dream because obviously I come from, I went to school to Clash Grade Three. We played GAA and I played Nemo, you know, GAA growing up and uh, a lot of. A lot of GA players will stick with GA because they don't believe that football, you know, could be the way forward. And I had to make a, a big sacrifice at 17 to sacrifice GA, which was a big step in my career. And I had a lot of um, heated moments where people didn't believe that, you know, I was going to make it. I was only 17, 18. I was still playing at Cox City. So for people to see me, you know, where I am now, I'm inspiring other kids and, you know, I take pride in enjoying that. Because, yeah, you could have a nice get GA career, but it takes an unbelievable amount of self-belief and say. Yeah, I was a big race guy. I remember um, on the 19th, I had a match on the same day, county final, and uh, I had to play UCD away, and I had to make a decision. The manager said, listen, I know both teams want you, but you need to make a decision for your career. You're 18, you can't keep keeping up. And um, Obviously, I'm a quite emotional person, and I, it was a very difficult to ring the GA f um, you know, a federation to say, I'm trying to ring Nemo Rangers, and I'm trying to follow football. And I know, you know, it wasn't an easy decision, especially being that young. And um, obviously, it's a great decision. I still have the support of Nemo Rangers and all, all the GA crowd. But, yeah, it was, um, it's a risk worth taking. We'll just end it on Paul Lennon, please. Uh, you know, you just uh, moving along then, you had coach you then, Limerick, you went in Brentford. And uh, that was a time when that club was really pushing on and, and we see where it is today. You uh, took choices then as well, didn't you, to make an anti-battle and to continue your, your career. Did you ever think of... 
quitting or going back to Ireland, or what was your take? Um, I never, I never had the, the you know, decision of quitting. I know it's extremely difficult. I've been in this position as before when I was at Cork City and I didn't get much game time so I had to obviously sacrifice leaving my hometown to go to Limerick and travel up on the bus to, to play for Limerick so when I was at Brentford I had two years left on my contract. Uh, I just had a gut feeling that I just want to play football, I want to learn the game. You know, I don't want to waste years sitting on the bench and not getting experience. So I made the decision to go to Rotherham and um, obviously it paid off and that's why I'm here playing with the national team and talking to you. Thank you. I'm going to say the end of an Aiden, actually, sorry. Yeah, just sorry. Jamie, just come back to Papu and Carabag. When you play them, given their finance and everything else, they probably were favourites, and even enough that they were the favourites. It's different. Uh, we're in the top 15 in the world, Azerbaijan, we're in the 17th. How, how does that change things and you know, the pressure to, to win this game against a team who are way below us in the ranking? No, I think there's pressure on every game you play. Um, we've seen when we played Andorra, it's not easy. Um, we came through and... It's never, you never have an easy game in football, no matter what level you play. So, um, yeah, although we might be favourites, it's going to be hard. We know we're going to have to do a lot of work this week to, to put things right. And we've seen um, in the last trip that it's, it's never a gimme. You never have a gimme. So, um, yeah, we're going to have to work hard. And, um, yeah, like I said, train well and give ourselves the best chance of winning on Saturday. Thanks, guys. Really appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you.